Hi, I'm Megan. And I'm Sarah. We're two moms with eight kids between us from preschool to teen. This is the show where we help you feel better about the mom you are and share our own parenting tips and personal stories. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. Hey, everyone, and welcome to episode 98 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis, here as always with Sarah Powers, and it is spring out there, believe it or not, and we are talking about spring cleaning and entertaining. This is one of those more than Mom Hour themes that we do every now and then, where we talk about stuff that's maybe not just about motherhood and parenting, but, I don't know, stuff about ourselves and our homes and our yeah. hobbies and what we like to do. Life outside um, of kids. Life outside of kids. It really does exist. <laughs> um, before we get into the episode, I want to talk about our top of show sponsor, and that is Plum Deluxe Teas. So if anyone's been following this podcast for a while or the blogs, the various blogs I've done, you know that I'm a big tea drinker, and I really love the specialness of having kind of like a new selection of tea to try out every now and then. So I was really excited to find Plum Deluxe. That's deluxe with an E. They have a tea of the month subscription. So get this. For just 10 bucks a month, you receive a, a hand blended all organic loose leaf tea that they choose for you um, kind of according to the season and send to you. And Tea Club members also enjoy benefits like gift swaps, free shipping on all purchases and access to a great tea community. And I know like tea drinkers, we are kind of different people and... Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean that in the best possible way. So this is a great gift. Mother's Day gift. Um, it would be fantastic for that. Hint, hint, anyone who's listening. So check out PlumDeluxe.com. And remember, that's Deluxe with a E. PlumDeluxe.com backslash T to join the club. If you join and you give them our name, um, you'll get a special deal. And Sarah will tell you that, about that in a second. But one thing I really loved about this company, and I really, really love their Mindful Morning Breakfast Blend, which I've been sipping on every morning. I just like um, the sound of that. I would like yeah, a mindful morning. <laughs> well, honestly, it's kind of like a it's a it's a breakfast tea, but it's got it's a blend and it's it's really interesting. It's not kind of your typical boring, you know, just plain black tea. It's got right. like a really it's like a kind of a creamy warm feeling Ooh. to it. It's the only way I can put it. I've really been enjoying that a lot. Um, all of their teas are handmade. They source all the ingredients. They make the recipe themselves. It's all organic and fair trade. Um, they have caffeine free and herbal teas as well. So it's really cool. And I really encourage you to check it out. Sarah, can you tell them about the, the special offer? Yeah, absolutely. But first I wanted to say, I just love also how, like you said, community minded a yes. tea company can be. Their Facebook yeah. page is amazing. Like, Honestly, you can tell that there is a community of people who not only like tea, but are supportive of some of these things like sourcing right. fair trade ingredients and just building community. It's just amazing. So if you want to join the Tea Club, that's the monthly subscription, join by May 1st and you will get a free bag of self-care tea, which I love because moms yes. need self-care in your first yep. packet. So just put the mom hour in their little how did you hear about us box when you sign up and that bonus will be added when your subscription begins. So yeah, that's Awesome. And I tried so the self-care tea and it's really good too. And very, and very kind of comforting. So yeah, I love do that. it. Okay. So it's Plum Deluxe, Deluxe with an E, PlumDeluxe.com slash tea. And um, nice just Mother's Day gift on. for yourself. Love it. <laughs> All right. Well, I have a quick announcement before we get into right. our spring updates and spring cleaning and entertaining. Um, and that is just a reminder about our Mother's Day challenge. You guys have yes. heard us talk about this before and the letters are continuing to come in. Um, but if this happens to be your first time listening, we are collecting your handwritten notes and cards and letters addressed to a fellow mom who might need encouragement. So it's kind of an anonymous or an imaginary recipient in that yes. you're saying, you know, dear mom, hey, going through hey, a mom. yeah, hey mom, going through a tough time. Um, I haven't even updated you, Megan, because I was gone last week, but I came home to a mailbox full. You know, there's some there's some really beautiful letters written for tough situation. You know, yeah. people going through a hard time in their marriage or um, just all kinds of things. And then there's also just really uplifting notes of encouragement. So there's something about handwriting and seeing somebody's handwritten words that's so much just more meaningful, I think, than tweeting it out or <laughs> whatever. <Yes. laughs> so um, yeah. as we get closer to Mother's Day, our plan is to share these with our community on social media, reading them on the podcast, hopefully even having some special guests read them on the podcast. Yes. That's a little teaser. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, so get them in postmark it by May 1st or you guys know us May 5th. I mean, Mother's yeah. Day is May 14th this year. So, so it's actually a little it's I think the almost the latest it can be, I think. So um, we've got time. So if May 1st comes around and you're listening to this on May 3rd, just 
jot a note down just and throw it in there the anyway um you can find it's our really, address it's making my day every time i see these by the it's way so everyone thank you so much for sending them in it's really really amazing um okay so head to the momhour.com when you're there you see a little mother's day challenge badge in our sidebar click that and that's where you get our mailing address and any other details you might need so again send those in by may 1st we read every single one and we will be sharing them we've shared a couple as teasers but we will be sharing them lots more as we lead up to mother's day so thanks Yay. you guys it's been really great so right. okay so i've kind of i've outlined shocker i have outlined our show today <laughs> what <laughs> Um, But I thought we'd spend the first little bit talking about this idea of spring cleaning and also spring home updates because the weather gets warmer. And we've talked we talked about this around the holidays, how, you know, seasonally it's fun to update the decor. But let's start with the cleaning. Well, no, let's start with spring. So let's talk about spring in general. We live in (laughs) very different parts of the country. So I'll I'll kind of tell you where um, what spring is like here right now. We had in Southern California um, an extremely gloriously wet winter, which we've really needed. We've been in a drought and um, I'm having flashbacks to my high school years because the last time we went through a drought and then a very the first very wet winter was um, when I was in high school. And I'm, I'm forgetting I'm remembering things that happen like there's something called a super bloom, which is literally like the hillsides are bright yellow and orange. So all of these wildflowers that you don't even see when you're in a drought, like they don't bloom at all are all of a sudden it's amazing um i should try and like find a photo roundup in the la times or something and share it in the show notes it's if you haven't been if you're not a california person and this is off your radar it's extraordinary people are going on hikes and so there's definitely spring fever in california because we actually got enough rain to make spring a thing and not just a warm-up um no that's great so i've been wanting to have the windows open more um and i I know everyone's laughing because we don't have a cold winter but there's still there's a warm-up and we're not having as much rain so I don't know. It just feels like everything's in bloom. Um, it's funny. My the previous owner of our home was really into gardening, and there's little like surprises left over from like things will sort of pop up. And I I admit I I don't know a lot about especially flower gardening. I know a little bit about like vegetable <laughs> planting, but right. things like bulbs will pop up that I didn't know were there. And uh, like yes. what, you know, and I'm like, what is this? this is a really nice surprise. And it's from you know years ago because we've been this is like our third year in the house so that's really fun um my jasmine on my front walk is in bloom and any california people who know what jasmine smells like it's like the best smell ever um so yeah so i'm feeling happy about spring and i mostly it's because we had a wet winter so that was good I'm this this time of year for us is like the you have no idea what's coming time of year. So late March to really late April, really anything could happen. So everything kind of smells muddy because even when there's a cold day, it will the next day it's going to thaw and you right. know it's just kind of in between and everything's kind of mucky. But it's it could still snow. Yeah. It could still freeze. So you yeah. really can't make plans. And right this time of year, I am obsessed with the temperature. <laughs> like the first thing I check in the morning before I get out of bed is the um, weather app just to see what it's going to be. And then I I find myself almost paralyzed by like, f- um, especially footwear choices. <laughs> yeah. Because I, yeah. I don't want to be cold, but I can't decide if I want to wear boots, you know, yeah. that'll be really warm. But what if I'll be too warm? And do I want to like yeah. bust out, you know, <laughs> my summer shoes, but it's mucky. I mean, I am all over the place. And it's so bad this year because I work for the radio station now. So every morning <laughs> for three hours, I announce the weather <laughs> Like every 10 minutes we talk about the weather. And the funny thing is they do the the weather, like the real weather guy does it in the middle of the night, like at four in the morning. Okay. So by the time I have the weather report in my hands at say, you know, 8 a.m., sometimes it's different. Like yeah. I'm looking outside going, but it's sunny and it says clouds. And so I'll argue my, my personal style on the radio is that I'll just argue with what we have and I'll start reading it and they'll be like, nope, that's wrong. I'm looking outside and there are, or it is raining and they said it wouldn't rain or whatever. So it's kind of fun. I get to be like a little bit contrary. Um, Which you love. I love it. Yes. Contrarian is my Arguing with like meteorological facts. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) exactly. Um, But the one, like, just like you. So in my, I'm not the best gardener and I don't do things like properly prepare my flower beds and stuff. I usually just kind of wing it as much as I can without having to do a lot of work. So things randomly, this is the time of year where flowers start randomly popping up. It's like the perennials. I didn't ever get around to actually doing anything, but I don't, I'm not actually actively growing them. They're just there. Yeah. (laughs) Um, 
So my yard has got um, daffodils and tulips and crocuses all starting to pop through, but there sometimes is snow around yeah. them. It's so odd. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's how it feels here right now. I still I have the windows open every chance I get. I get really grumpy right now when it drops below like yes. 50 degrees. I remember that because so well. Because it feels from, wrong. Yes, yeah. from my Chicago days. I just remember looking at actually the national weather map because that was back when you looked in the newspaper. I would have the Chicago right. Tribune. Oh my goodness. And I would look at the national weather map and I'd be so mad that like places like New York and D.C. and, you know, other places that have legit winters were warming up. Right. And it would be like 22 in Chicago. That was April was a was a bleak month for me. Wow. And yeah, uh, the, my Chicago I, winters. Yes. Yes. And sometimes it's great. Sometimes it'll be yes. a month where. You know, but like this time last year, there was a huge snowstorm. So I am not holding, I am not getting too excited. Although right now it's so funny. I'm looking over the top of my mic and there is a TV screen and it, the weather just popped up on the oh, screen funny. and it says it's going to be 75 and sunny like <gasps> middle of next week. So I'm like, oh, yes, that's just that would be that's amazing. what I live for right now. Yeah. Well, I yes, I, I know I'm very lucky here because we're, we're just temperate pretty much all year. But spring, you can you can guarantee it's not going to be too chilly or too hot. So it's yeah. just, yeah, 65 to 75 pretty much all the time. Um, well, that's fun. I, this makes me really want to enjoy spring. One other thing yes. that's happening in my yard that I'll mention is my lemon trees. You've been in my yard. Ugh. Remember the girls oh my climbed gosh. over Those the lemon are trees? So drool worthy. I couldn't get over your lemon trees. Like I was really kind of obsessed well, with them. We've this is again our third season. And the first year they produced these really big but not good lemons. Like they were all pit, pithy and dried out inside and they were yeah. humongous. It was like mutant lemons. And la- then last year they were pretty <laughs> good. And this year they're amazing. And again, I don't know why, other than it has been much more normal for rainfall, but I have more lemons than I could ever do anything with. So if um, any listeners are, you know, experts in the in area and want to drive by yeah, or want to drive by my house, <laughs> Katie, Katie, are you listening? You can have all my le- <laughs> lemons. Um, but yeah, I know people have said they've made homemade lemoncello and I'm not a big like lemon. I made lemon curd a few years ago. Oh, I remember that. that hard. You okay, we'll link, link, to, link, to, link to that. Yes. The post. Okay. Um, it, takes, it was it was um, time intensive, but honestly, I got so much lemon curd, really more than I think my family would ever eat unless we slapped it on pancakes like every day. Right. So, yeah, right. it's great. It tasted really good. I love it. Um, okay, well, let's talk spring cleaning, which is kind of where I was going with this. Because <sighs> is this even a thing anymore? Like, I well, know. Set us up with your favorite episode. I mean, episode. Your favorite scene in the Little House books, which I course, think you've it's mentioned It's Little before. Town on the Prairie. I've yes. talked about this a lot. It's Little Town on the Prairie <laughs> okay. where Mary goes off to the school for the blind and Pa and Ma just because this is what they did in those days, leave the kids at home for like a week. So Laura is a teenager. Um, had Grace not come along? They took Grace. No. Oh, it was just Laura and her. Carrie. Yeah. They, had to, they took Grace with them. So it was Laura and Carrie were left at, on the homestead for day, like for a week on their own. And they decided to do the spring cleaning while Ma and Pa and Grace are gone. And much, you know, Chaos ensues, and there's some messes, and you the know they stove, have to take out. Doesn't one of them get black in the stove? Yeah, like, the black, the black, yeah. the stove black. Yeah, um, yeah, it gets somewhere, and I, I mean, it, it, it's, it like falls on the ground. I can't even remember now what happens yes. with it. It gets on something it's not supposed to. I need to go back and read this. Evidently, uh, they have to take out the straw ticks and like take out all the old musty straw yes. and replace it yes. with fresh straw yes. and Air it all, all those things. Yep. Anyway, so that that gave me a very romantic idea about what it would be <laughs> to do a spring cleaning now. In 2017, it is not quite as romantic. Um, I did not do a big spring clean last year. I did the year before. Um, I also have not had a cleaning person come. And just like two years ago, I had not had a cleaning person for a while. Right. And then last year I did. So like it really never got bad enough that I needed right. one. But then this, I have not had a cleaning person since before Christmas. Right. And it's also been a very, very busy time for me. And yeah. so there are certain things that have just been left undone for so yeah. long now that I really do feel like I need to do a deep clean. Yeah. Is it a thing? I don't know. Do we, we don't live the same. We don't have like fire, you know, coal stoves yes. inside the house anymore. And things don't, and most of us don't have like heavy draperies everywhere. It's just different. Right. I think. It is, but, it is different. But I, I think also there's probably some seasonal, uh, seasonal regional elements is what I meant to say to yes. this too, because when you're, when you've winterized your home and there's yeah. things that are, you know, a certain way during the winter, you really are sort of making updates to your home for spring. And for me in yeah. California, that's just not the case. I, well, and there are things you can't get to when it's cold and, and snow 
snowy out and that, you know, if anything involves being taken outside or like windows, you really can't do those so much during the winter. winter. So there's to me, there's something psychologically cleansing about the idea of a big spring clean. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I want to point our listeners to that great guide you did on the Happiest Home blog a couple of falls ago, and it was for a fall cleaning challenge, but oh, it's yeah. basically the same, same thing. thing. It was a room yeah. by room or a zone by zone deep clean of your home with tips and products, and it was really, really well done. Um, so we will link to that, and um, if people need sort of tips by going room by room if you want to. Um, from my end, I have never been big on big deep cleans but again I think some of that is regional where I live and some of it is season of life like it's not really possible with our little kids to set aside an entire weekend I feel like we kind of did that more when before kids you know um did like a whole bunch of big projects um but I definitely feel motivated to seasonally like change out my decorations open up the doors spruce up the patio make the outside look nice so I feel like this spring for us, though, we have a lot, unfortunately, of like home repair issues going Ugh, on. It's just minor. It's so unfun. But it's not fun. And I feel like our spring cleaning energy is going to go toward those, unfortunately. Yeah, all those necessary, but just like no one can actually tell it was done afterward. That's, that's right. the worst thing about Right, and the money just things. goes yeah. away. <laughs> um, the money is gone and it's like you have a better driveway or yeah. something that yeah. no one cares about. Oh, my retaining wall yeah. is secure. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, my roof isn't Great. leaking anymore. Like, awesome. (laughs) Actually, as soon as we record, I have a plumber coming because there's water coming out, but very slowly from under my dishwasher. And even if it's a minor dishwasher issue, it's not it's not pooling out. It's been so subtle that I don't think I even noticed it at first, but it's messing with the floors. So before I can replace a floorboard there, I have to figure out what's leaking. So the leak might be minor, but then I have to figure out a way. We have these nice laminate floors and I have to figure out a way to have somebody just come and lay. We do have extra flooring in the garage, but I don't know anything about like how much is going to have to be ripped up and put back down. So it's all that kind of not fun, not fun and not cheap stuff. But yeah, well, do you have any like I know you do have some small, inexpensive ways to kind of add spring into your living space, even if you're not doing a big, deep clean or some big overhaul? Oh, yeah. Well, like I said before, random flowers always start popping up. The nice thing about them being random is they don't really look good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not from like a, a landscaping perspective. From a landscaping yeah. perspective, I don't I can easily go around and cut a whole bunch of them because right. I don't feel bad losing them because they don't they just don't look They don't look purposeful. Um, So I do a lot of cuttings this time of year. Um, I always swap out tablecloths. I start swapping out those sort of like Christmassy and fall and those really um, earthy smelling Mm -hmm. candles for more light floral scents. Um, I love to go around. Sorry, I interrupted. Do you have a favorite place to get your candles? So I like to, there's a couple stores in our little downtown area that have the good um, soy candles um, that I really like. They've got the, the Woodwick's. You know, there's someone who's got the woodwick ones when they make the sound when they. Oh, I don't know this. And, and then they're they're cool. They're like you've probably seen them. They like crackle. Oh, when they no. burn. So Which those are fun. Although me. for me, those are more of a winter thing because they remind me of like a log in the fire. Right. And then the other ones, I just honestly, Target has a great selection, okay. and often yeah. on the clearance. And you can get some really good quality candles and interesting scents. So I just for me, that's sometimes just kind of a random thing. Um, I'm just out and I'm like, oh, this is a pretty smelling candle yeah um, I feel like you I'm, have a, I, no I'm a very impulse candle buyer but I feel yes. like the problem with that is that I vacillate between very cheap um uh, I know like yes. Michaels and Hobby Lobby often have really cool looking candles in that they'll be in like a kind of a fat um glass you know like a yeah. jar looking thing so mm-hmm. I sometimes I'm drawn in by the aesthetic and then the candle quality isn't great I either don't care about the, the smell isn't great or it burns too fast so yeah I would I know um I listen to the girl next door podcast religiously as you know and they are big fans of the bath and body works I know people love all of those oh there are some scented. of the scents that the, some of the yeah. scents that they have like the orange um there's an orange smell that they have I can't remember what else is in it I love oh I think it's some um, bergamot that to okay. me is also more of a fall smell, but it smells so good, so delicious. Yeah, another, I'm have another to hit place them up this spring. I really like to get candles is TJ Maxx because okay, they yes. all have yes. really pretty like designer can like yes. I have a bunch of Calvin Klein candles, yes. which is kind of silly, but they're good prices because it's TJ Maxx. Great prices, and um, yeah, I like those too. And I also like you know I have a whole drawer full of linen tablecloths that are 
just the ones, you know, most some are floral, some are just solids. But this time of year, I also like to go check out the um, like just the vinyl ones they uh-huh. have at Target and other places like that because they're fun. Like I just put one on my table the other day that's pineapples. Oh, that is fun. And yeah. it's just kind of like it'll probably last a week or two because they start to get they get like when the kids scrape their fork against it, they right. get holes they, yeah, and yeah. stuff. Or the dog likes to try to steal sandwiches off of it because um, <laughs> she's learned how to. Oh, like rip pull? a tablecloth with her paws and pull it. <laughs> and so the tablecloth gets all stretched out and holy. But it'll last a couple of weeks and it's just a nice little introduction into the new season. So yeah. I've got one of those out right now. And very, very affordable. I, and I love to go around and open up all the blinds. So I, I'm an open windows, open blinds kind of person anyway. Yeah. But then if anyone's trying to watch TV, they'll start putting them back down to mm-hmm. kind of cut down on glare. And I'll just be like, nobody's allowed to put the blinds <laughs> down this week. Like, yeah. no. Yeah. I want sun, so. Yeah, natural light is, I feel like I'm, yeah, I'm like that every day, opening the yeah. blinds as soon as, yeah, agreed. Um, so, yeah, candles for me, too. I just got a new one that was a Mrs. Meyers uh, lavender scent, which I, mm. you know, you and I are both big fans of Mrs. Meyers for cleaning products. The lavender verbena scent is so good, too. Yeah, I don't think I had ever had one of their candles. I'm trying to think if I have, and um, so I like it. I have a really shallow window ledge in front of my kitchen sink. There's something about like a window in front of your kitchen sink that's so homey and nice. I know. I have one of those too and it's got candles on it. Yeah. And mine's not very deep. I mean, maybe Mm -hmm. three and a half inches maybe. So it doesn't work for a big jar candle, um, but it works for like a little bud vase and like a medium sized, you know, maybe like three inch diameter round candle. So I usually try to have one there and I did just get a lavender scent one. Um, But yeah, the only other thing I think that you know, that doesn't cost a lot is just switching out. If you have seasonal decor, um, we did a whole episode on this around the holidays about how fun it is to just redo your mantle or, and not even, I'm not even saying buy new things, but take everything off, dust the picture frames, swap out the photos if you can, or if you want to, um, and even putting things back in a different order or with one little different touch. I feel like it doesn't have to be spring, but it just can kind of those things tend to have a trickle effect. Like if your mantle yeah, totally. looks pretty and every time you walk into that room, it kind of brightens your day. And then, you know, and then you think about putting a vase of flowers somewhere. And yeah. so, and then my other favorite thing is I'm a Trader Joe's shopper and um, they start having daffodils for, I think mm. seriously a dollar 99 for a bundle. They're so cheap. And, you know, when you get them, they're all closed up, but they open up within like six hours. So it's like magic. Yeah. You just bring them home and I put them in a little jar and it's happy and super cheap. So. And I'll often walk into the grocery store and just grab one of those potted plants that's right at the front uh-huh. this time of year because it's like something for like a flower. Yeah. I want it in my house. Have you ever had so success plant like transferring those to I don't bigger. bother I know well I I one time have had success so now I feel like it's like a challenge if someone got me one from Trader Joe's and yeah. I happened to have a big ceramic pot on our front porch that something yeah. else had died in and so I just I there was nothing to lose because there was nothing in there and I don't even think I had good potting soil I just kind of dug around in the soil that was in there put it in and covered it up and watered it and it's been like a year and it's still wow there. so you so can, maybe I should try I usually can. just keep it in the little pot that it comes in and until I don't know, I get tired of it or <laughs> right. dies or whatever. I'm not. Right. I'm not the best with plants. Um, you know, one I thing know, I was going to say when when you were talking about um, swapping stuff out on the mantle or whatever your space is, and I think we all have our space, right? Yeah. Like the place that we decorate. One thing that's made it really easy for me to do that is mine is a buffet. Um, it's like a right. three drawer. It looks kind of like a bureau. And I just keep all of the stuff in the the top drawer. So. That's- it never goes away. And so it's really easy. What No matter what holiday is or season it is, I can come over and just kind of rummage through the drawer and be like, oh, here's that thing I forgot about. Or here's this. Here's a new candle, whatever. It's just all right there. It's not yeah. the neatest and most organized solution, but it means I actually do it and it's fast and easy. And that's yeah. more important to me. Yeah. No, I think that's a great tip. We just got out our Easter decorations, and I'm sure I've repeated this when we did it over the holidays, but I'll just offer the tip again. When you get out, if you have seasonal decor that's stored away, like for a holiday, when you get it out, the first thing to do is throw away anything you don't love. Somehow that stuff like sneaks back in. Yep, And, you know, something like Easter, which we talked recently about the Easter bunny and stuff. I feel like my kids are, they're still young, but they're getting older. And I just feel like I had a lot of really tacky gimmicky yes. bunny stuff <laughs> and not that you know not that a little bit here and there is not good but I'd rather have no Easter decorations 
than yeah. ugly ones. So I feel like that's always a good tip is to be ruthless and do it because otherwise the kids get their hands on stuff or you start to convince yourself that maybe I'll just put this wreath on the door anyway. But right. if you don't love it, if you don't get excited when you open that bin, chuck it. Just just and part with it. <laughs> so many so many things that are sort of like Easter um Easter decorations can be kind of vaguely spring. Yeah. And a lot mm-hmm. of spring decorations are vaguely Easter, but you don't have to worry about having all this, you know, like like a bunny barfed everywhere <laughs> and then have to like clean it up the day after Easter. Yes. You can kind of like a few of those pieces yes. go a long way. Then you yes. just take those ones and put them in the drawer and leave everything it's else so out. It's so true. And it's very similar to how I feel about Halloween and fall. And I, I, feel say, like and I, I even do that for Christmas. Like a lot of the stuff I yes, put up for Christmas winter. stays out because it's really more winter yeah. than Christmas. I feel like I have a better handle on it in the fall because I, I prefer fall decorations to a whole bunch of Halloween. So I just have the, like you said, I have a few things that come out for Halloween, but I feel like I, I I don't really. All I have is ugly bunny stuff right now. It's a whole bunch yeah. of plastic bunnies. Um, I used to do that in the summer because, like, the only holiday yeah. is Fourth of July, and that's pretty specific. It yeah. really has nothing to do with summer. <laughs> it's pretty. There's no. <laughs> we'll take there's, tips. Yes, that's so funny. Um, okay, well, any specific projects that you specific things you want to tackle this spring that we haven't already talked uh, about? So I want. I have. And my backyard doesn't really exist. I have a patio between the back door and the garage. It's I don't know, maybe twelve feet wide and it's a good size and like uh-huh. the, the width of my house um and I really want to make that like an oasis because I live on a busy street so in the front you can hear the air conditioner unit by the way which oh one yes that's thing, hard we have part nuts. of our yard that we can hear and that. then also you can hear traffic from the street and then on the side there's an alley so I really want to close it in mm-hmm. um with plants and make it really feel like a private space and that's mm-hmm. going to probably take me a couple weekends of just really hard work but yeah. I'm my thing is I got to get on it sooner I mm-hmm. often this time of year keep thinking like I'll do it, you know, end of May when the weather's really good. And right. somehow, the next thing I know, it's 85 degrees out right. and I've missed all the best weather and yeah. I don't want to do it. And the plants are all picked over. Right. So this year, I, it's got to be like next weekend. Yeah. I'm yeah. just going to have to get on it. Yep. Yeah. And you what can always you? not use oh. it if if the weather's chilly in the first right. half of May. But at least it's Exactly. Done. But I'd like yeah. it just to be done. Yeah. It's, it's just tricky here because you don't want to put stuff out too early um, because if it freezes, you know, you could lose some plants. But I really think that Sometimes we're a little too cautious with that. And as yeah. long as you're not planting it in the ground, yeah. you're probably this time of year probably gonna be okay. Yeah. So and you can yeah, and you can always start with some non planting if you really needed to. So Right, exactly. Um well this is funny. Remember when you were at my house in early February and you looked up above so above our we have these built in cabinets um that our T V is also built into and there's a ledge on the top. And I've always had a hard time with those high spaces where it feels like you right. should maybe have some plants or baskets, but I never know what to put up there. And so I had found these really cool um, kind of shadow box square frames and then a couple of other little accent pieces, a couple um, white vases and a couple little fake succulents. And I had them arranged up there and I really liked the way it looked. And you looked up and you were like, why is the paper that came inside those frames still in there? <laughs> I think and, I might have asked it in a like, I think I just kind of poked fun at you. I was yeah, like, you hey, yeah, nice you paper. Did. You're like, I love your house. I have one question for you. <laughs> OK, so that was the beginning of February. It is yeah. now the middle of April. April, and it still looks the same. In fact, it looks worse because at one point, I think the cleaners came and they dusted up there. So now it's I had it really arranged where in my mind it was like the perfect balance between random, but also balanced, you know, like kind of right. symmetrical. And now it's just random. It's like there's a bunch of stuff up there, including three frames that aren't filled and they're square so my idea was to pick some of my Instagram shots that maybe are a little artsier or cool looking um, and print like five by five I think the frames are nine by nine so to print maybe five by five or six by six Instagrams and kind of put them in these shadow box frames so I'm declaring it here because I want to be able to share on our Instagram for the mom hour when this project is complete because it's not that hard. It's just printing three photographs, taking the pack, the plastic wrap off these frames that have been up there since right. January and replacing. So that's my one goal. My other really simple one is um, wreaths for our front door. I yeah. feel like this is a challenge for me for two reasons. I have a black front door, which I feel like a lot of greenery doesn't look great on. I 
it's I've seen I have neighbors with the same black door and it looks really pretty if you have whites or yellows that really pop but it's sometimes right. hard to find it'll be easier in spring than holiday but it's sometimes hard to find wreaths that aren't a lot of green um, and the green just doesn't stand out in the same way and the other reason is it's a double door like a French door um, and it already has the nails for two little so I almost need two smaller wreaths instead of one big one but I've wanted oh, okay. I've wanted some yeah. for a while and spring is a perfect time to find some like yellows or whites or something that yes. would just be fake and you know I'd probably put them out every spring for a few years I've just kind of been in the market for them since we got this house so that's my other I would love to find that so I have to tell you quickly a funny story about seasonal wreaths okay we don't really use our front door very much. It's kind of where the dog goes out and there is a yeah. front yard, but it just doesn't get used as much as the back. So I just kind of forget about my wreaths. And also I find that especially living in Michigan, um, the season takes forever to be over and then suddenly it's over. So right. like it's winter, it's winter, it's winter, it's winter, it's still winter, hanging on. Right. Yes, technically it's spring, but right. outside does not feel like it. And then suddenly it's like a month into spring and I right. still have a Christmas wreath on my front door. <laughs> so my friend Liz, who is an amazing, her house always looks appropriate it's always decorated beautifully like she's always on top of that stuff um sent me a text last year just kind of making fun of me for having a uh a christmas wreath still on my on my door my front door which is on the busiest road in town right. oh yeah and she so, passes so a million you don't times care because you don't use it, I don't but care. Everybody I don't else it but everyone it. else yeah. in town sees it she's like hey nice christmas wreath ha 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 and i said something like it is a winter wreath thank you very much and i think it was like the end of march or something like that so John and I went and stole her wreath oh, that's so off their awesome. front door, which was this beautiful, like little Easter wreath with little, you know, eggs and stuff. Yeah. In, and um, and we put ours on their front door, and then waited to see how long it would take. And they also always park in the back, so it took a while. <laughs> I don't think they saw it right away. And then they came over and swapped, they got their wreath back and hung a wreath that they had hung like a Bart Simpson off of, like <laughs> but took his arms and legs off and hung them from it. And we didn't see that for a couple of days because we just didn't notice so anyway it's just kind of this ongoing thing now like the wreath wars but that is awesome i'm yeah. that is a great story i love it so if well, i keep up with my wreath too much no one will be able to make you know to yeah that it's, to me anymore, yeah at least so. yours has a story to it mine <laughs> exactly. just needs just needs some help yeah um okay well we're gonna take a quick break we have another sponsor for this episode that i'll talk about for a couple of minutes and then we'll transition into talking about entertaining which is also awesome. fun for spring so we are really happy to have jet.com as a sponsor for this episode Jet is a shopping site that makes it easy to save money on the stuff you buy all the time anyway. So yes. they offer free shipping on orders over $35, which, let's be honest, it's pretty easy to it's have It's very essential. easy if you start if looking at If you've ever been to Target yep. and tried to spend less than that. Um, they also Good offer luck. free returns <laughs> within 30 days um, and two-day delivery on thousands of items that you use all the time. Um, a big selling point for them is that there are no membership or annual fees, which is awesome. So if you want to give them a try, there's nothing that you're you know, signing up for that's locking you in, you get all of the benefits without paying that extra membership price. Um, they also have great customer service, 24 seven available. So you and I got to try out Jet and um, yeah. I had a great experience. I ordered several things that we use around the house all the time. We were out of our body wash in the shower that Brian and I use um, and I was using the kids stuff, which is just not really up to snuff for no. adult body odor. <laughs> um, and it was really easy. I actually ordered from Jet on my phone. So their mobile app is really easy to use because I happen to be um, traveling and stuff. So that made it really easy. And within two days, free shipping and all of my essentials were on my doorstep. So, um, yeah, yeah. It's so great. I, I ordered using the um, desktop because I uh -huh. just tend to be well, on my laptop browser because um, I'm always on my computer. Yeah. And it was also, you know, it's not always the case that that places have an e a, a, as good of a website presence as an, a mobile app. And it was a great interface. It's really easy. You can like the way it's laid out. You can really see what products are available. You can also see the per unit or per ounce price. Oh, I love that. And then how much that price will drop if you order more yes. of them. Um, and I have a great selection of stuff. Like I got a lot of the same things I would normally get, like Viva paper towels. Um, I got toilet paper because I feel like we are always, we are always running out. And it's really good to have a backlog of that. Yep. But I also got like a huge thing of Mrs. Meyer's, um, refill mm -hmm. 
for some dish soap that I was about to be out of and a few other little things that like I just need and I just yes. need to have. And, and I saw them and there they were. And it was kind of like a reminder, like, hey, I need that. Yes. So, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I got lemon shine, which I use for my dishwasher, and I have never found it in a bigger than a 12 ounce um, canister. But we use it with every sometimes you can use lemon shine occasionally, but we actually have to use it pretty much every time for our dishwasher. Yeah. And they had a bigger canister and I've never oh, cool. seen that at any other retailer. So that was a fun bonus. So, yeah, super easy shop on the go on your phone from your couch. Um, and yeah, I had a great. Yeah, no great membership experience. fee. It's great. Yeah. Um, so there is a special offer offer for our listeners. So if you want ten dollars off your first three orders over thirty five dollars, just visit jet.com and enter the promo code the mom hour at checkout. Again, that's just if you want ten bucks off your first three orders over thirty five dollars, go to jet.com and enter the promo code the mom hour at checkout. And of course, as always, uh, terms and conditions do apply. So check out jet.com for more details. Yeah, definitely head over there. I had a great experience and we thank them for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk about entertaining. And while entertaining can happen all year round, don't you feel like spring is kind of, there's a natural segue into kind of opening up your doors yes. literally and figuratively? I feel like, so, yeah. I don't know how it is for you, Sarah, but I feel like this time of year, between like Christmas, between January 6th, say when everyone goes back to school after Christmas and like this time of year, I don't see anyone. Yeah. I don't go anywhere. I mean, it's different here because the weather. Yeah. The weather yeah. Really it is different for you. Part. But I actually remember that from my Chicago days. Don't, I don't well. go anywhere. I don't yeah. see anyone. No one comes over. A lot of it's also the people are really busy with school and you have that long stretch where there's no breaks really. Yeah. So we've just been, it's like the grind yeah, has been going on. Yeah. Yes. And I feel like there's people I'm like, gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. And then I remember it's like this every year and yep. pretty soon it's going to be better again. And so, yeah, even just like last week with the weather getting better and people getting back from spring break and stuff it's like oh my gosh I see my friends again they come yeah. over we do stuff yeah so yes this is definitely the time of year for it yeah this yeah I I agree and even though we don't have the extreme weather changes here I do agree um, I want to make a case and I think you and I can both agree um, for moms who feel overwhelmed because your kids are really little and your house isn't the way you like it um, I have always found that biting the bullet and entertaining, whether that means a, a get together, a casual barbecue or having people over for anything, entertaining before you're quote unquote ready has always been a good move for me. And, you know, yes. I can see how maybe the other side of this is don't stress yourself out. If this sounds like a nightmare, then don't. You're, you're not obligated right. to throw a dinner party. However, I would encourage moms to sort of make yourself a little bit, step outside your comfort zone a little bit, because I always get so much out of throwing and get together. And my house yep. does too. Cause I find yes. it gets me in the groove to take care of all those little things like the picture frames um, yep. that I haven't done. And while you might have to bust your butt for a little bit and um, kind of do some of the cleaning projects you've been leaving, you have those things to enjoy after the guests leave. Yes. You know? There's not that, that feeling before you have guests over where you yeah. like go crazy and maybe you have like 15 minutes for everyone that's going to get there and you just get to sit at your table with a glass yeah. of wine and enjoy yeah. what you've just accomplished and by cleaning the, your house. Totally. And even if the party leaves you with a mess to clean up, it's usually a mess like dishes and spills yeah, on the it's floor. Manageable. But it, but the things that you've done to make your home welcoming to guests, those little, the buffet top and the mantle and the little yep. decorative spruce up, you get to keep enjoying those. So I'm just a yours. huge encourager, encourager of yeah. do it before you're ready. Plan something, a casual barbecue or people you've been meaning to have over that you yes. you know haven't gotten to know and plan it out like three or four weeks and then you know like if, you know, if the guest bathroom toilet doesn't work you probably want to fix that but you've got time and um i don't know we have found as kids get older it can be everybody can pitch in and get the house ready yeah. and so um i really enjoy doing that you know in the yeah. spring in the fall you know so. and and i also want to say like and this is speaking as someone whose house has been in pretty bad shape recently <laughs> even if your house is in really bad shape if you give yourself like a solid hour and then really be strategic about it you're going to be fine so yeah. You know, one thing, like, you don't have to worry about it being perfect. Invite the people who are closest to you or who won't care. Make yeah. it a small group. I know there are certain people who, in the way our house is laid out, is a little funny. The nicest bathroom by far is the master bathroom, and it's on the first floor. But, of course, you have to go through our bedroom to get right. to it. Um but I often, that's the bathroom I clean and I leave my bedroom door open and that's the bathroom people use. And if they're close to me, they don't care. I'd yeah. rather have them in the nice bathroom than stress out about this weird little powder room we have that's impossible to clean. And like, yeah. I just keep that door shut or I make it the kid's bathroom. Yeah. 
And if I just hit that bathroom, make my bedroom look nice, you know, make the bed, put everything in the closet, whatever I have to do, get the kitchen and like those high traffic areas, just let that be good enough. I mean, your yeah. friends are there to see you. They really yeah. aren't there. Just make sure your house smells good yeah. and your surfaces are cleared off and people can move around and have a place to sit and yeah. people really will be fine. I think it helps me sometimes to put myself on the other side and think yes. about what I look at when I go into somebody's house. Um, and it's not the floors. I really no. don't. I never look at somebody's. I might look at like what kind of floors they have because that's always interesting. But you wouldn't be like, but I don't oh, look if there's floors dust a little dingy. or yeah, if exactly. the dog tracked in mud. I really, I really don't. So um, I'm, I'm curious about how they decorate and what kind of yes. throw pillows they like and what, you know, what is about their house that makes yes. it their personality. Open and the blinds and let some light in and yeah. put a candle, a, light can, a candle, clean can the them toilet. a glass of wine. <laughs> exactly. Um, yes, I totally agree. So that's our, that's our making a case for having a party. I'd love to hear if our listeners decide to throw a get together after yes, listening to this, absolutely. let us know how it goes. I definitely want to this spring. Um, so we thought we'd get into some specific um products or tips or hacks um and we okay. each have a few do you want to just take turns on this megan we'll yeah kind of offer up i'll go thoughts. i'll just go first okay i usually try to have something kind of special for the kids to do especially if there are kids coming i'm finding this my kids are getting older and um you know we have friends who have kids in younger age groups it's really mm-hmm. nice for them to have something to do and i remember really appreciating that when people would go out of their way to have like even a special coloring book from yeah. the dollar store on hand for my little one maybe especially if there weren't kids in their same age range. So right. that's something like I try to have something a little, a little special activities, new sidewalk chalk, art supplies, coloring book, even like a movie everyone wants to watch right now if the weather's bad, something yeah. to put on. Um, and it, along those same lines, that also gives your children the, uh, I guess, freedom to maybe put away those toys or, or supplies or whatever. Yes. They really don't want a bunch of random kids playing yes. with. Um, that just kind of helps grease those wheels socially with them and give them something to do without getting it's so true because you're not asking your kids to share their toys you're actually providing something new that everyone exactly going to share you know even though it's at your house that's ooh, that's a really good strategy especially for it is hard for kids to you know open up their own they're not quite as generous intrinsically as we are um i love that idea so let's face it if anyone if the three-year-old that comes over is going to break something it's probably not going to be my stuff it's going to be my kids stuff yeah so that gives them you know it helps respect their space as well i love that um okay well i love any product that helps keep beverages identified with their owners and you know remember the little wine glass charms that were i feel yes. like they were kind of in a while ago more maybe i feel like you want to hear a- something funny i never yeah. took mine off they're still like rattling well, around on my wine glasses i think you're well, supposed to take them off and let the guests choose but yeah I'm well I don't, I don't to me it doesn't matter i get really anxious this is going to sound dumb i get anxious if i don't know which drink is mine like i hate that looking around and if it's like a beer yeah. or a glass of wine like, is, that, like, is that my lipstick where did i yeah. set, like where did i set this down um so but i feel like there's some cool creative different ways now um i don't have these but i've seen really cute stemless wine glasses that have chalkboard like a chalkboard square mm-hmm. on them that you can chalk write the guest's name um we i've talked about it on this show before or, um, I have a set of these wine glass writers. They're like a dry erase kind of um, pen, but it That's washes fun. off easily with dish soap. And what I like about those is you don't need a stem to put, like the little charms right. usually work a on a glass with a stem. These could work on a beer bottle. It could work on a pint glass. It doesn't work very well on plastic. Okay. Um, Good to but know. I'll, I'll link to them in the show notes. They're really cheap. They come in a three pack and um, they're, yeah, they're fun. You can write the person's initials. You can get creative, write something and else. And when out. in doubt, you know, a solo cup with Sharpie works yeah, as well. Yeah, solo cup with yeah. Sharpie <laughs> works. I've also, I've, I have enjoyed when um, people at casual family friendly get togethers have put out Sharpies or pens with the beverage cups, especially for yeah. the kids. Because yes. if the kids are, you know, and you can even Sharpie on a juice box or a pouch. Absolutely. So, um, Um, That's always if you're the one hosting, just throwing out a Sharpie um, for others as people are serving themselves. Um, So, yeah, so I'm kind of a sucker for any any product that does that. But I will link to my wine glass writers in the show. Have you tried those little gummy like jelly wine glass charms? I I feel like they wouldn't stick on cold. Yeah, I feel like they would stick with like a dry Red right. wine glass, but not like a cold white wine glass. Right. With yeah. condensation. I, I feel like, I don't think I've ever owned them, but I feel like when I've used them, they've been hit or miss. And if you bump them, they could fall off. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Okay. Just so let curious. us know, listeners, too, if you have a favorite drink identifier. And let us know if I'm crazy for really needing my drink to have my name <laughs> yeah. on it at all times. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I've got um, I've got an, another one. So I again, I live on an alley and near a, a busy street, and that's fine for my kids. They're old enough to kind of play in the alley and and very safely. I mean, they know what to look for, and we're far enough back from the road that I don't feel I don't worry anyone's going to fly around the corner off the uh, off the main street and run them down in the alley. But they also have some common sense, and we often have friends over and family that have younger kids. So I actually bought a couple traffic signs. Um, the one I got, the ones I got from Step Two, and it's these little green. I'm sure you've seen them around. They're like yes. these little green plastic men. Yep. And they're like leaned forward, holding a flag. Yep. And it's exactly slow. What I mean. And I've actually bought those depending on where we are, and I've put them in the middle of the alley. So uh-huh. if someone actually can't, they have to like stop, and um, and then one of the kids will move it. But it just gives like everyone an opportunity to like see what's going on if there's yeah. little people running around, and then it allows my guests to relax a little bit. I yeah. mean, they're still close by, they're still watching their kids, but I feel like then no, there doesn't have to be that one parent who the whole time has to be kind of running after their kid, running interference. Everyone can relax a little bit because we know that someone's looking out. Um, for the little ones. So that's actually been great. And people really do respect that. I think sometimes like it's that green. It's like kind of like a signal like, hey, yeah. pay attention. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's activity here. And people really do slow down when we put those up. So we found those to be really helpful. And I feel like that's one of those purchases that sometimes you put off because it feels like, well, I'm only going to use it two or three times a year. But it's, yeah. it's so nice to have, you know, just to have right. in your possession. And that's such a smart um tip too because when you go to someone else's house you don't know the traffic patterns as well so I can you see can being, take them be yes yeah that's true or I was gonna yeah. say being when you're the guest it just would be peace of right. mind because you don't intuitively like I intuitively know what's too fast to drive on my street like we you know it becomes part of your like car you know right yep but um your guests won't necessarily so if they have right. it's just a little more peace of mind that's a great idea yep, absolutely yep. um okay well my next tip is for getting people out of the kitchen if you want to now sometimes the kitchen is a nice gathering place but if you don't want the entire party to stand in your kitchen the entire time um, I have gotten creative with setting up a self-serve bar or appetizer station as far away as possible from the kitchen you can't do it like at the end of the kitchen counter because people will still like drawn to the flame they just end up standing right where it's in your way and this I guess is more for when you're you know hosting a dinner or something where you've got to cook and stuff in the kitchen but um, I think you can get creative with setting up those stations even in parts of the house where you might not normally serve food and drinks or outside but the farther the better and it really does work people will go you know how it works when people are socializing they need a drink refill so they'll walk over to wherever that is or they need ice so if you when you do it have everything that somebody would need ice a bottle opener you know garnishes if you're doing a bar and then napkins and everything I'll put um, a roll of paper towels and like wet wipes for spills so that all of that, people are not wandering into my kitchen and into my pantry looking for stuff. And it really does work. Then the social activity follows the food and the drink. And, you know, if you if, if the goal is to not have people congregating in the kitchen, either because it's inconvenient or you just want them to mingle more, um, I found that really works. That's a really, really good tip. Um, mine kind of also has to do with food and drinks in a different vein. So what I like to do when I entertain is to keep the main meals really simple. If I'm going to impress, it's going to be with like fun, a fun cocktail or a snack or a punch. Um, we have different ones. Like we do this punch that's basically um, orange juice and Sprite. And then you put in a block of uh, sorbet or sherbet. Oh, fun. I don't know. Is sorbet and sherbet the same thing? It's like that. That peachy, like multicolored sherbet. I think that's buy. sherbet. Yeah, I think there is a difference. Sor- but, a sorbet yeah. is like the stuff that's like icy, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Sherbet's like creamy. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a gourmet. Um. But so we just put a block of that, and it makes it really foamy, and the kids love it. And we have one of those like in one of those little dispensers. And then sometimes there's just like a fun drink that we're making everyone make, you know, mojitos or right. gimlets or something like that that they don't have. It's something you maybe wouldn't just order yourself at at a restaurant right? and then have some, a few little snacks that look really fancy and probably didn't take that long to put together so that when people come, the actual meal itself is simple to put together. And so we often just do like a sandwich platter. We've done fun pasta with shrimp in it, which is really mm-hmm. easy, but kind of impressive because it's mm-hmm. got shrimp in it. Or I mean, honestly ordering pizza. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's just like, I feel like if there's like one little thing I put some effort into that looks great and kind of impresses, I can really, like lay off the rest of it. And then the most important part when everyone's there and I want to enjoy them and enjoy their company, I don't have to think about the food so much. 
Yeah, I love that. It's so true. It's almost the entertaining equivalent of having a simple black dress and then fun accessories. Yeah, it's like, exactly. you know, like have what you know and what's easy and then go crazy with the yep. with the fun stuff. I, that's a great idea. Um, OK, well, the, the last thing that I was going to bring up is that hosting can be stressful on young kids. I have one kid in particular who likes his routine and for some reason has a particularly hard time when we host. He's fine about going out to other parties and going with the flow. But for some reason, us hosting a get together is a is a stressor for Reed because You know, you have all the prep where you're cleaning and you're getting ready when you're ignoring your kids or they're not getting the attention that they normally get in their home environment. I think that's what sets it off for him is he's at home. But why isn't anyone talking to me? Dad doesn't want to play cards with them and whatever. Um, And then you have the time when the guests are actually there, which can be a little sensory overload for some kids or like you brought up the really good point about kids sharing um, and mom and dad, again, are not available to play with you or even maybe to support you in navigating things like, you know, sharing with other kids and all of that. So I think it can be pretty stressful. Um, I think it depends on the kids and how old they are and your unique kids. But um, I did write a post a couple years ago around Thanksgiving with some tips for helping kids who have a hard time with this. And it was around Thanksgiving if you were hosting Thanksgiving, but all of the same things apply. And I'll link to it in the show notes. I won't talk about the whole thing, but a couple of the tips were, you know, use screen time wisely. I think sometimes the simple solution is to plug them into the iPad, but I have kids for whom that actually makes them way, way worse behaved. And when I unplug them and say, okay, now your friends are here. Now it's time to socialize. It would totally backfire on me. So maybe you wait and you put on that coveted movie like you brought up later on, but you don't let them gorge on the iPad while you're clean, you know, while you're getting the house ready. So beforehand, because they're not going to be able to transition then into that chaos. Yeah. So just being strategic about the screen time. And then, you know, if at all possible, make sure they know what to expect and just say, you know, our guests are going to be here. Here's what I expect while our guests are here. We'll have special time tomorrow. Or if you can build in a little bit of one-on-one time, you know, before leading up to the event. Um, it's not easy. And I think it's, it was very hard for me at certain times to parent during hosting an event. Like I, I felt like I had the entertaining part. That was kind of fun for me, but then to also support my kids emotional needs, right. I just feel like yeah. it's hard, you know? Um, so yeah, so I'll link to that post. It has some more tips, but I guess I'm just saying, I know it's hard. And I think with a little bit of forethought, you can kind of help kids for whom that's particularly difficult. Yeah, great, great, great tips. Yeah. Okay. Well, so does that kind of wrap up this topic? Yeah, that was packed, really fun. We, we really packed, packed a lot in. <laughs> a lot in there. So yeah. this is a great transition to talk about something we've mentioned before, but I'm really excited to Me officially too. announce, and that is that the Home Hour podcast is back. Yes. It's back. Like officially. you can look in your podcast app, search for the Home Hour, and you will see episode 65, which aired last Thursday, um, and then coming up in a couple of days, you'll see episode 66, which will be the official official. Relaunch. So what we've done, we've brought on two brand new hosts named Kirsten and Graham. They have a show planned for the home hour that is similar to what Megan you did, only more focused in the area of actual home design decor. Yes. Um, their tagline is design DIY and gracious living. And what they mean by it. that is everything that you know that falls under being you know a host and having a home, be- making it welcoming. So both the practical and tactical. Um, they're going to talk to a lot of interview a lot of interior designers and you know real estate people contractors all of that nitty-gritty home stuff but also stuff like entertaining and creating a welcoming home and they are moms of young kids like we are or you are moving out of that phase but their kids are more in my kids age ranges Um, they have a fun backstory they both have experience in tv and radio so they're great on-air personalities funny they have a great chemistry together Um, they have been friends a long time they remind me a little of us in that way um, because they live in different parts of the country but they know each other really well they have very different homes very different home challenges Um, and so anyway back in episode 65 which you can already run and listen to right this minute um, I I interviewed them as a way to kind of introduce them. And I really would like our listeners of the Mom Hour to give that a listen and listen to their yes. first show, episode 66. If, it's, if you're not into home stuff and you don't stick with it, we'll still love you. But as a favor to us <laughs> and as a way to support yes, our growing out. network, yes. we would really love that. Um, and they're also so eager to build a community of listeners the way that you and I have, Megan. So, yes. you know, send them an email, follow them on Instagram and sort of cheer them on, you know, for us 
us and with us. And I just am so excited for. I'm really um, excited as well because I. I, I think that was kind of my my initial sort of um, vision for that podcast. If for anyone who maybe does remember listening to it, and I'm sure a lot of people are like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, the Home Hour was sort of my, my original podcast where yeah. I was doing mostly interviews um, about home life. And I think I said everything within your four walls. And for me, that kind of meant family life and, and kitchen and everything else. And then when we started doing the mom hour, that kind of took care of that need. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it's such a nice compliment though, because while you and I love to talk about stuff like we did today, DIY and entertaining and stuff, we don't talk it's, about it enough no, for people and who really want to hear about yeah, it. It's so. not our main focus. And like, I exactly. laughed, I laughed with them when I interviewed them that I, I like this kind of stuff, but I don't even have the right vocabulary a right, lot of the time. Exactly. Like when we I don't call know and enough. get my floor repaired, I don't even know how to explain what right. kind of floors I have. And Kirsten right. has built her whole house from scratch and worked with yeah. a ton of contractors. Graham yes. is in the process of decorating um, a quite large house that she ended up in after small space living. So they just have a lot more experience and a lot more, um, you know, vocabulary. They don't yes. have all the answers like you and I don't have all the answers, yeah. but um, they're much more equipped than we are to talk about this every week. Um, some of their upcoming topics are really fun. The one that spoke to me is they're going to have an episode where they talk about what they loved about their grandmother's houses. Isn't oh, that I awesome? Love it. Isn't that yes. a way to like, I, it was like so oh, creative. Oh, gives me the warm fuzzies. I know, I know. And so, <laughs> yeah, so there's going to be practical, tactical, and also the warm fuzzies. And we are so excited for them. We so. are. And just in general, I want to say, too, we are growing our little network. Yeah. And the most important, it's going to be a very slow grow because the most important thing to us is that every show we put out is this just gives you the same kind of feeling this show does. So yeah. whether, you know, the camaraderie and non judgment, you know, non judgmentalness yes. and um, just like we're all in this together, you know, encouraging, but not overwhelming. Yeah. Every, every show we put out, we want to have that same vibe. So it's going to take us a while, but I'm yep. really glad to have everyone along for the ride. I think everyone who listens to the mom hour and likes it will get something out of every show we put out. And I that's what so. I'm really excited about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we always love getting your ideas and suggestions. Um, we got a great response. I did post about the home hour on Instagram and people were so excited. So keep talking to us. We, you know, we host the mom hour together, but we are also running the life listen network. So when you have ideas and feedback, you know, you, you guys know where to find us because you're our regular listeners. So um, once again, the home hour is back. Just look for it wherever you get your podcasts. And I, of course, will link to it in our show notes, which will be at the mom um, and you can go to the home yes, if you, you like can. to do things with actual URLs anymore. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks again to both of our sponsors, Plum Deluxe Tees and Jet.com. Go to our show notes to find those special offers that we mentioned from both of yes. those great brands. Um, head to themomhour.com. This was episode 98. Can you believe it? I know. I can hardly believe it. Um, and Hundreds coming up. It is coming up. So yeah, head to the show notes, check out our sponsors, check out the home hour, and we will talk to you guys next week. 